Hello, my name is Jerry Klein. I am a certified pedorthist and director of pedorthics for Apex Foot Health Industries, a division of OHI. Today I'd like to discuss with you the proper methods on how to measure feet and how to fit shoes. But first I'd like to introduce you to the Apex Fitting Tower. By having this fitting tower in your facility, it gives you the advantage of showcasing 20 pair of our most popular men's and women's styles in the most popular sizes and allows you to use these shoes for trial fits to cut down on your margin for error when you order shoes. Now I will demonstrate how to properly measure feet. I will be using two devices, the Braddock device and the Red Stick. The Braddock device will take three measurements of the foot, heel to toe, heel to ball, also known as arch length, as well as the width. The red stick only takes two measurements. It takes the heel to toe, as well as the width. I will now demonstrate how to properly use a Brannock device. I'm going to place Karen's right foot onto the Brannock device into the heel cup that is marked right heel. I'm going to make sure that her heel is not pressed too hard back into the device that's just resting in there, cupped by the device. I'm going to ask her to stand. You always want to have an even distribution of weight on both your feet when you measure in the standing position. You want to make sure that the socks are not pulled too tight, which may allow the toes to go into flexion. And you don't want it to be too loose, which will give you a longer measurement. So, the heel to ball guide, we want to slide it forward. We want to move the foot towards the device. I'm going to put my thumb on the little bump, which is the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, or the bunion joint. And we want to cup that little round bone into the cupping of the heel to ball measurement. It's always a good idea to push down on the tip of the longest toe because it may have a tendency to be bending upward. That will give you a truer measurement. Your line of sight when measuring the heel to ball needs to be straight down as a plumb line so you can read the size properly. It is important to note that the device that we're using is a unisex device. It can be used for both men and women. In, in Karen's case right now, you can see that her longest toe is on the silver background. However, the women's scale is the black background, so we need to read the numbers across. Karen is measuring a size 7 heel to toe, a size 7 heel to ball. I'm going to slide the width bar just so it makes contact with the foot and see where it points to. Karen is measuring a wide in width, so we can safely say that we're measuring her right foot as a 7 wide. We will now measure her left foot. So we turn the device around, we put the left heel into the left heel cup, we get an even distribution of weight, and we take the same three measurements. Don't forget to check the sock that it's not binding, because that's going to shorten your measurement, and you don't want the sock to be too loose. So I'm aligning to my thumb at the bunion joint. I'm sliding the bar on the width. And Karen is measuring a size 7 heel to toe, a 7 heel to ball, and a wide as well. With Karen's feet, both her feet have been measured identically. It is not uncommon that two feet will measure differently. When that does occur, what you want to do in the case of one foot is a size 7 and one foot is a size 8, cut it down the middle at 7.5 and, and use that size when measuring the width. I've measured Karen's feet as a size 7W. I've chosen the appropriate shoe for her and now I'm going to demonstrate how to properly fit the shoe. When removing shoes from the shoe box, it is important that you make sure that you remove all the stuffing that is in the forefoot of the shoe, as well as loosening the lace to make it easier 
to put the shoe on. So we're going to begin with the right shoe. I have a metal shoehorn in my hand. I'm going to place her forefoot into the shoe. Place the shoehorn at the back and assist Karen in pushing down to the shoe. I'm going to ask Karen to kick her heel back. By doing that, that assures that the foot remains at the back of the shoe where it belongs. I'm going to put the foot at an ankle at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to close the lace snugly. This is very important because the job of the lace or if the shoe has Velcro, it's important that it's snug because what you're doing is creating a diagonal line of pressure to keep the heel back in the proper position. I'll now put the left shoe on Karen's left foot. Four foot. Heel. Pull up on the tongue. Let's do our kickback. 90 degrees. And closing the lace snugly. I'm going to ask Karen to stand. Now to check the fit of the shoe, what you need to do is start in the arch area, come forward and locate that bunion joint. And you want to make sure, and you can utilize your thumb again, that that bunion joint is in the widest part of the shoe. This is more important than where the longest toe is. That assures that the foot is going to flex properly where the shoe flexes. When checking the length, you want to locate the longest toe and push down. And what you want to have is approximately three-eighths three eighths of an inch to a half of an inch of empty space, approximately the width of your thumb, as I'm showing you here. When checking the width, you want to have a feeling of looseness in the shoe, as you see here. You want to feel empty space. There has to be some breathing room for the foot, and it's also not a bad idea to ask your patient to wiggle their toes and tell you where they feel they have ample room. And then do the same on the opposite shoe. Don't be surprised if your patient feels that the shoe is too big. This is because they probably haven't had their feet measured for a long, long time and have been wearing shoes that are probably short and narrow. I will now demonstrate how to properly use a rich stick. As I said earlier, the Brannock device takes three measurements, heel to toe, heel to ball, and the width. The rich stick only measures heel to toe and width. When you're measuring a foot that may have a deformity, especially in the big toe, that can be curling over to the second toe, and you have to rely on a heel to toe measurement, you're going to measure short. The heel to ball measurement becomes the most important measurement to assure that you're going to fit a shoe properly by putting the widest part of the foot into the widest part of the shoe. On the rich stick, on the top, there are measurements for men's and women's lengths, as well as this other rectangular box, which are the numbers that you will use for the width. Also, on the back, the picture shows the foot resting on top of the device. I do not suggest doing that because the device is actually narrower than the foot, so I suggest measuring the foot by putting the device on the side of the foot. I recommend asking your patient to stand, putting the device on the inner border of the foot, even distribution of weight, slide the bar where it just makes contact with the longest toe, push down on the toe, grab the bar, and flip it over, and in Karen's case, we are measuring the same size 7. To measure the width, you come across the top of the foot, grab it, 
flip it over, look at the other set of numbers in the rectangular box, and I'm measuring a number 18. I now have to flip it over, locate the size 7, come down to the number 18, go across to the width scale, and it is measuring the same 7 wide on her right foot. I'm going to measure the left foot the same way, push down on the toe, 7, the width, 18, wide. So we're measuring the same 7 wide.